Cells acquire information from the surrounding connective tissue, or the extracellular matrix, to survive, proliferate, and move. The information encoded by the extracellular matrix is processed by transmembrane proteins called integrins. When bound to ligands situated outside the cell, the integrin's intracellular domain recruits molecules from the cytoplasm to form complex structures called focal adhesions. Many of the components of focal adhesions bind to cytoskeletal proteins, linking the cell's external environment to its internal architecture. Benjamin Geiger and his team from the Weizmann Institute of Science in Rehovot, Israel, are searching for components of focal adhesions using a combination of high-throughput screening and systems biology approaches. Geiger calls focal adhesions special creatures because they are more than the sum of their structural parts. They seem to be very, you could call it intelligent structures, in the sense that they can integrate a tremendous amount of information about the surface and uh, lead to specific signaling events that can affect the shape of a cell, the dynamics of the cell, migration versus adhesion, and so on and so forth. The relay of information is accomplished through recruitment and activation of signal transduction molecules to sites where focal adhesions form. Activation of these signaling pathways can lead to both local changes in adhesion structure and global changes in gene expression. According to Geiger, traditional methodologies for studying proteins means that the majority of the action occurring in focal adhesions is likely to be missed. These are signaling and surface environment sensing devices, and when one wants to understand how they do it, you have both to deal with the molecular complexity and with the complexity of, uh, of the functions that they perform. So we said if we want to understand how a focal adhesion functions and perform certain uh, cellular processes, we really need to have an unbiased a view of the different components, what they do, all of them, as a system. To better understand focal adhesions, Geiger and his team recently completed a high-throughput visual screen using siRNAs to individually knock down genes known or suspected to be involved in migration and adhesion. Now, the siRNA approach uh, helps us to deal with the molecular complexity and the multiparametric approach of analysis helped us uh, very much uh, in dealing with the diversity of physiological responses to the modulation of the adhesion signs. This ambitious five-year project was a team effort led by Sabina Vinograd Katz, who spoke to us about the details of the screening process. This was a long project, not only because of the amount of SIRNAs SIR that were involved and the deep analysis that we per performed, on each one, but also because we were developing the tools and the analysis strategy together with the retrieval of the results. Using a microscopy system with automatic focusing capabilities developed by its VCAM, the authors image cells expressing a GFP-labeled focal adhesion protein, paxillin, transfected with the selected siRNAs. CAM also developed the analysis software used for the subsequent analysis of focal adhesion features. The group originally anticipated they would find many molecules critical for focal adhesion formation, but in fact they hit mostly molecules with regulatory functions because siRNAs that completely impaired focal adhesion assembly resulted in cellular detachment. After all the measurements were taken, the researchers adopted a multi-parametric analysis to group genes together, clustering them according to common effects on focal adhesion morphology, distribution, or cell shape. After we had all the multiparametric data of the effects of each siRNA on focal addition and cell shape, we were fortunate to work with uh, Dr. Shalev Itzkovich. Shalev was then uh, in the laboratory of Professor Uri Alon, a leading system biologist, and uh, taking the advantage of uh, the multiparametric data that uh, we could uh, we retrieved from the screen, uh, we could draw correlations between the different focal addition and cell shape parameters. The multiparametric analysis showed that certain characteristics of focal adhesions, such as length and intensity, often went hand in hand. For example, knocking down the EGF receptor resulted in a decreased focal adhesion area, intensity, and length. Different clusters often had similar phenotypes, but varied in the relative intensity of their effects.
From these results, we could propose a model uh, for the molecular hierarchy of focal addition maturation. In this model, there is a common pathway of focal addition size, geometry, and paxillin content, but there are some genes that uncouple these correlated features. One of these uncoupling genes was TALIN1. TALIN is a cytoskeletal protein that localizes to focal adhesions and is bound by beta-1 integrin, among other proteins. We found that TALIN1 knockdown leads to a low, low amount of focal adhesions, but uh, the focal adhesions are, that are formed despite of uh, the knockdown grow and reach very big dimensions. The dynamic analysis, shown here, revealed that TALIN1 is also involved in focal adhesion turnover. Because each level of analysis adds more meaning to the results of the screen, Geiger emphasizes the importance of making the data available to other scientists. I think realistically, in every screen like that, with a huge investment of time and effort, you generate data which is far beyond the capacity of a single lab to deal with. And in that regard, I believe the most uh, important uh, decision is as soon as you finish with a screen is to select to make a decision which are the proteins or pathways that, or phenomena that you would like to study in detail and follow, follow up on them and make all the information very rapidly available to the entire community. Although much work is still needed to fully understand the results, Vinaigrette Katz and her colleagues have discovered a number of genes that were not previously known components of focal adhesions with their screen. For more detailed information about the study, see the August 10 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.